Has President Obama given up on banning assault weapons? And we'll have a debate on the assault weapons ban between Ed Rendell, governor of Pennsylvania, and Wayne LaPierre of the National Rifle Association. With us now from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Governor Ed Rendell, and here in our studio, Wayne LaPierre, Executive Vice President of the National Rifle Association. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Governor, morning. let me start with you. You have this uh, situation outside of Pittsburgh where a man is holed up in his house. Police come to respond to a domestic disturbance call, and uh, three police officers uh, end, up, end up dead. The man in question was using uh, an assault weapon, which he... Uh, which he uh, attained by using legal means and went through a, a, a check. Do you believe that crime would not have happened had he not had that weapon? No, I think the crime itself would have happened, Harry, but I think uh, one officer at least would still be alive. And remember, the AK-47 jammed when he was putting out an incredible amount of firepower against police arriving on the scene. Uh, it jammed. Had it not jammed, we could have lost a whole lot more than three pol police officers on that day. There's absolutely no reason under the sun, no rational reason, that we should allow people to legally possess these type of semi-automatic assault weapons. They're made for one purpose. They're not used in a duck blind for hunting. They're not used in the Olympics for target shooting. They're used to kill and maim people, and most often, it's police officers. Do you believe the assault weapons ban should be reinstated? Absolutely. Do you think there's political will in this country? You just heard David Axelrod, you heard uh, Dianne Feinstein say last week on 60 Minutes, it's not going to happen. Well, I think, first of all, I agree with the president's decision right now with the economy being as challenged as, as it is, with health care on the table. Uh, this is not the time to bring this issue up. Uh, but I think it has to be brought up in the near future because every police organization in this country supports, virtually everyone supports banning assault weapons. You know, we all pay homage to police. We have these days in Washington, May 15th is a day to remember the policemen who died in the line of duty. We all give homage to the police, and yet we don't listen to them on this basic mm -hmm. issue. Since the assault ban has been lifted, Harry, 40 American police officers have either been killed or seriously wounded with assault weapons. All right, Wayne LaPierre, are the cops wrong? The rank-and-file cops know this is a totally phony issue, and that's why Congress doesn't want to deal with it again. You know, the governor sits up there in Philadelphia. Let me tell you the reality of the crime problem in this country. The former U.S. attorney said there's simply no risk of a felon in Philadelphia putting a gun in his pocket and walking out on the street. The former, the head of the FOP up there said the problem in Philadelphia is the revolving door criminal justice system lets the most prolific and violent criminals back on the street again and again. The chief of detectives of the Philadelphia Police Department has, has recently said there's no reason to talk about gun control. They don't enforce any of the gun laws they already have. He talks about no consequences. So you think, you think the assault weapons ban is just a boogeyman? I think it is a totally phony issue. It was enacted, and the governor's doing it again today, on the basis of saying these were machine guns. That's a lie. They were rapid fire. That's a lie. They made bigger holes. That's a lie. They were more powerful. That's a lie. It was lie after lie after lie. Congress found it out. That's why they let it expire. Mm -hmm. And lies that are found out don't get reenacted. Here's the majority of Americans support the assault weapons ban, and here's, here's what a lot of people think. And one of the members of your own board has said, well, this whole thing about going assault, uh, after assault weapons is just a way for uh, them to take away our rights to carry shotguns. That's what people, is that what people in the NRA really believe? Harry, let me tell you, there is no functional difference at all between any of these so-called assault weapons the media talks about. Assault weapons are machine guns. They're fully automatic. They spray fire. They're rapid fire. That's what our soldiers use. These guns we're talking about that the governor wants to ban mm -hmm. are functionally no different than any other gun. The performance yes. characteristics are exactly mm -hmm. the same. Okay. There's no difference. Governor? That, that's just unbelievably untrue. That's <laughs> unbelievably untrue. The assault weapons that are used that are sold in, in sporting goods stores now because the ban has been lifted, they put out a tremendously high amount of fire. And remember, the ban not only banned these assault weapons, it banned large capacity ammunition clips. Now, I'd like Wayne to explain to the American people why anybody should have the right to have an ammunition clip that has more than 10 bullets in it at one time. Go ahead. What, what use is that 
made for, Wayne. Governor, who, you, who uses you know there, that? there is absolutely no difference between two 10 mag round magazines and, and three of another. I mean, and you it, just said something, difference. You just said something because completely someone, untrue. It's a big difference because well, someone has to change I want you to, to go put to, in I want you to go to the range with me. And let's get ballistics experts. And CNN has footage on this where they went to the range with police officers and they showed there's not a dime's worth of difference between the guns you want to ban and you don't want to ban. You're going to ban these semi-autos and then it's going to be handguns and then it's going to be pump shotguns. See, that's the excuse and all that's the, the time. Truth, and you Harry, know they use that excuse all the time. Here's and a, here's everybody a, knows, everybody knows that every one of our amendments have limitations to it. That's you can't you can't cry fire in a crowded movie Governor, theater. Governor, hang on, hang on one second. Let me just speech. go up here. Let me ask you this: Do the people in the NRR, the NRA, do the rank and file really believe the president of the United States is interested in over, basically overturning the Second Amendment? You know what they're trying to do right now? They're trying to pee back this whole phony issue of, of uh, on the back of the tragedy in Mexico. I challenge the president of the United States and the media to prove that 90 percent of the guns used by the drug cartels are well, being smuggled It may not be 90 percent. That certainly has been, been put in question, hey, but it, there's certainly plenty uh, of these uh, guns uh, are coming uh, across the board. You know, the only people that have ever put up their hand in the air and testified under oath on this mm -hmm. is BATF two weeks ago in Congress. And mm -hmm. let me tell you what they said. I'm not sure where those institutes get these numbers. The investigations the that we have, number, right. exactly, right. in the 2000 no Nobody is claiming the, the 90 percent number. And, right. and the we see for firearm seizures flowing across the border don't show us showing individuals taking thousands of guns a day flowing into Mexico. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, if there's one gun, it's already illegal. ICE, the customs people, mm -hmm. enforcement people, were asking Congress, do you need more law? Right. They said, no, we just need to enforce what we have. Let me go back to the governor, because the thing that the NRA has said repeatedly and was just said again this morning is, why aren't the laws that are on the books enforced already? And that would alleviate most of the problem. Well, first, first of all, number one, I agree with Wayne that we need to enforce existing laws better. But in Pennsylvania, we've gone in, in over a decade We've increased our prison population in our state prisons by over 15,000 people. Uh, we are enforcing the laws. We're putting bad and difficult and dangerous people who use firearms to commit crimes in jail. When I was district attorney, we enacted the first mandatory minimum sentence for people who use guns to commit crimes. We just enacted in Pennsylvania a 20-year mandatory minimum sentence for anybody who fires a gun at a police officer. But that is and I agree, we should enforce our existing laws better. And in fact, as Wayne will admit, he and I and Charlton Heston, we combined on a tougher procedure in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But having said that, having said that, Quickly. let's go back to the original point. What blessed use is there for one of these assault weapons? What American needs an assault weapon okay. to protect themselves go ahead, Mr. or to it, shoot targets? It's, go it, ahead. it's not an assault weapon. It's no different than it's any an other gun. Weapon. But you know what happened in Philadelphia, Governor? When the cameras went away, you went away. Uh, but I'll tell you what we ought to do this morning. Let's agree on this. Every American city, let's put Project Exile. Every time a violent felon, drug dealer, gang member touches a gun, let's prosecute. I agree and let's that. go to President Obama and say, look, you've got 100 U.S. attorneys. Let's have them do 10 <laughs> additional prosecutions a month, each one of them. No, better than that, let's do 20. Harry, let's make that, a deal right here. Yeah. I agree with Wayne. I agree with Wayne. <laughs> we'll do that. And Philadelphia used it and used it very successfully. But also, Wayne, let's you and I agree that the Congress can pass a law saying that individuals can only purchase one handgun a month. Uh, That's 12 a year. And who in their God's name needs more than 12 you, handguns You know, there a year? you go again. Like criminals are standing around going, only one, only one. Don't you get it? They're criminals. They violate but all your criminals gun laws. Criminals get their That's guns from people who buy guns. Criminals get their guns from people who buy guns legally. Straw purchasing is the number one problem for crime and guns. And it's illegal, and let's enforce the law. All right. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Governor Ed Rendell, thank you for your time this morning. Mr. LaPierre, Thanks. do appreciate it, sir.